Europe is a continent where different cultures, languages and ideas meet. For centuries, it was one of the greatest battlefields in history and home to the most powerful rulers, who divided almost the entire globe between them. But times have changed. Europe is losing more and more influence on the world stage and other states are taking its place. To counteract this and ensure peace in Europe for all time, the European Union was founded. By uniting 27 member states, Europe's international voice grew again and together the states could act more powerfully. But what if the states were to make the final decision to unite Europe completely? What if the EU went from being a union of different states to a single country, the United States of Europe? What impact would this have on the countries, what advantages and disadvantages would it entail and how powerful would such a superstate be? Today we take a look at this daring thought experiment. The idea of a unified European state is not new. Throughout history, there have always been masterminds who have put such a scenario on the table. The term United States of Europe was first used by the French writer and statesman Victor Hugo in a speech at the International Peace Congress in the year 1849. He spoke out in favor of a united Europe, which would be the only option for lasting peace on the continent. As the name suggests, the USA was seen as the role model at the time. And he predicted the creation of a European parliament and a European currency, which was actually implemented around 150 years later, albeit not in a unified state. The idea of a United States of Europe was then repeatedly taken up by various politicians. In the year 1929, for example, the French Prime Minister proposed a federation of European nations in a speech to the League of Nations, the forerunner of the United Nations. And Churchill also used the term, United States of Europe, in a speech at the University of Zurich in the year 1946 as the only guarantor of lasting peace on the continent. Interestingly, he did not necessarily see Great Britain as part of this. Instead, he saw his country, together with the United States and the Soviet Union, as a kind of arbiter go over the united European entity. So the British have always liked to cook their own soup. But the vision continued to grow in the minds of the politicians of continental Europe and bit by bit the European Union emerged. Although it did not have the unification of the member states into a superstate in mind, it took on more and more powers and standardized more and more areas of the individual countries. It is therefore not surprising that there have been repeated calls for a complete unification of the EU in recent years. One prominent example is the former German Foreign Minister Joschka Fischer, who said in the year 2000 that he believed that the EU must ultimately become a single federation whose political leader would be elected by direct elections among all citizens. And a number of organizations, such as the Union of European Federalists, the European Movement International and the Volt Party, have also emerged to advocate an even stronger union of states. But let's take a look at a fictitious scenario of what a fully united EU would actually look like. How would this European superstate operate and how powerful would it be? I will say up front that in reality there are no serious efforts to achieve such a union, the interests of the individual member states are too different. Nevertheless, I find it exciting to play out such a fictitious scenario. We assume that the EU would unite in its current starting position. That is, with the current 27 member states, without the United Kingdom and without potential future accession candidates. This would give the state a total population of 450 million, putting it in third place behind India and China, well ahead of the United States of America. However, the latter would be considered a role model in many respects. Similar to there, the state would have a common president and a common parliament, but the individual states would still have extensive autonomy in many areas. The German chancellor would then be comparable to the governor of an American state. However, as important areas such as defense and foreign policy would now be in the hands of the European government, it would be much more capable of taking action and could act much more confidently in geopolitics vis-a-vis -vis countries such as China or the USA. A united European voice on the global stage would therefore significantly strengthen Europe's negotiating position. Above all, important decisions could no longer be prevented by individual member states. Nevertheless, a centralized government would of course also overlook many local needs and interests, which could lead to great dissatisfaction and conflict, especially in a continent as diverse as Europe. And the complete unification of 27 different systems could also lead to increased bureaucracy and ineffective administration. The EU is already regarded as a bureaucratic monster. Incidentally, a united Europe would rank seventh in the world in terms of area and would be extremely diverse with 24 official languages, whereby English, German and French would establish themselves as working languages, as is already the case. 
In military terms, it would also grow together and a common European army would be created, as Macron has often called for in reality. A united Europe would certainly also be part of NATO, but could form a strong counterweight to the United States with a unified military. However, it would also be very difficult to bring all interests together and define a common defense policy. The issues of financing and a unified military service would also raise major questions. What would be very easy to implement, however, is the common currency. 20 of the 27 EU countries already use the euro and the remaining 7 countries, such as Poland and Hungary, would then also have to introduce it. And a united European state would also be an incredible power block in macroeconomic terms. In the year 2021, the EU's GDP amounted to 14.5 trillion euros, making it not too far off first and second place, namely the USA and China. A complete unification of the economies of all EU countries could lead to further economies of scale, which would certainly increase GDP even further. In addition, a united Europe would be in a strong economic negotiating position, putting it on an equal footing with China and the USA. Ultimately, however, the sticking point in this thought process would be how centralized the United States of Europe would be. Would elements such as education, policing or jurisdiction be unified or would it be organized federally? In the most likely scenario, all these points would be organized federally, which is why not too much would change. In summary, we can say that a united Europe would offer strong advantages such as a stronger international presence, increased economic efficiency and an improved response to the crises of our time. Overall, the disadvantages such as even more bureaucracy, the loss of national sovereignty and the lack of local representation in such a diverse continent as Europe would probably lead to the collapse of the state quite quickly. Many countries are already threatening to leave the EU and in a common state the different views would become even clearer, which is why sooner or later it would be history again or could even lead to conflicts between individual members. A European superstate is therefore highly unlikely in the near future. But what do you think? Do the advantages or disadvantages outweigh the disadvantages for you? Let us know in the comments.